Welcome everyone to the Final Fantasy IX Tetra Master In-Depth Guide. Tetra Master is my favorite minigame from any Final Fantasy, but it is very confusing and most of the time you are hoping and praying even with everything you know in this guide. Uh, but we'll just kick it off with the basics. So the game is played by two players on a 4x4 game grid and that is known as the board. The board can have up to six spaces blocked at random at the start of the game and cards cannot be placed on those block spaces. Each player uses five cards each and each card has four digits on it and between zero and eight arrows. The arrows determine in which direction a card can attack or defend in. In order to do battle with other cards on the board, both cards must have arrows pointing toward each other. You can capture a card without doing battle if you have an arrow pointing toward a card with no arrow of a corresponding side, but this only applies when attacking. While defending, you can place a card without an arrow next to one with an arrow and it will not be flipped. Now battling is where this all gets really complicated. The first part is easy. If you place a card with an arrow pointing toward an enemy card's arrow on the board, the two cards will do battle. This is where the four digits come into play. The first digit is the card's attack power. The second is a letter that indicates the card's type. The third digit is the card's physical defense, and the final digit is the card's magical defense. The card's type, which is indicated by the second digit, will be one of four letters. P for physical, M for magic, and two special typings, X and A. The first two types are straightforward. A physical card will use its attack power against a card's third digit and a magic card will attack against an opposing card's fourth digit. The X for an X typing can appear in any of the four digits on a card, but regardless of its position, it still denotes the card type. An X card will all do battle against the lowest of the opposing card's defense stats, so it doesn't matter if a card is 6P26 or 6P62, against an X card, its defense will always be 2. The final card type is A. The A denoting the card's type can only appear as the second digit, unlike the X card. While a card can have an A as any of the four digits, if it appears anywhere but the second digit, it actually signifies the number 10. A type cards are the strongest in the game. A type cards attack against the lowest number on the opposing card, including attack. For example, a 0M99 card would have zero defense against an A-type card. But that isn't all. An A-type card will also attack with its own highest digit. So a 1A68 card would have an attack power of 8. Now to make this really tricky, the numbers on the card range from 0 to 15, with the numbers 10 through 15 denoted by the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F meaning the strongest card theoretically would be FAFF. -F. That number between 1 and 15 isn't actually the real value of that digit though. It's a stand-in calculated by the game as a hexadecimal. To make it simpler, a value of 0 will have a real value between 0 and 15. A value of 1 has a real value between 16 and 31. A value of 2 between 32 and 47, 3 between 48 and 63, 4 between 64 and 79, 5 between 80 and 95, 6 between 96 and 111, and so on and so forth. You're basically adding a, a 15 uh, for each number on top of that. Uh, so we know all the values of the cards, but how does the battling actually work? Uh, it's not as simple as a bigger number beating a smaller number. It's actually a needlessly complex and luck-based system. So let's say a 6M17 card attacks a 0P88 card. In this situation, the M card would use its attack power of 6 against the P card's M defense of 8. These numbers denoting a number from the values I gave earlier the 6 between 96 and 111, and the 8 between 128 and 143. So let's say that the 6 in this instance is equal to 100, and the 8 is equal to 130. 
The game then rolls a number between 0 and the value of each card. Between 0 and 100 for the attacking card, and between 0 and 130 for the defending card, in this instance. This number is then subtracted from the original value, and whichever card has the highest remaining value wins the battle. So if the computer rolls a 12 for the attacking card and an 80 for the defending card, the remaining values of each would be 88 for the attacking card and 50 for the defending card, meaning that the attacking card wins. Even though the defending card's defense was higher, it's still lost due to a bad roll and RNG. Now, I actually have a Squaresoft licensed real-life version of Tetra Master. Uh, it was only released in limited quantities in Europe a very long time ago, um, but they simplify this process quite a bit. And while the process is different, it actually gives you a very good idea of how likely you are to win in any given situation. Uh, the way the real-life version works is you take the attack and defense values between 1 and 15 and use the enclosed chart to find a number. In the case of the example, we would go 6 down and 8 across on the grid, which gives us the number 56. The attacker then must roll a 100-sided dice, and their roll must be equal to or higher than number 56. We can think of the values here as percentages. Since you are using a 100-sided dice, in this case, there was a 44 in 100 chance the attacker would get a winning roll, giving us a 44% chance the attacker would win. And this pretty much holds true in the in-game version, though the calculation is more complex. The chart shows us the obvious as well, which is if you attack with an equal number to an opposing card's defense, like 0P00 versus 0M00, you have a 50% chance of winning that card battle, and it is entirely up to luck. Obviously some matchups are better than others, and generally you want to have a much greater attack value than a defending card's defense value, or vice versa if you're defending. Just for reference, if you used an FX55 to attack a 7P04, you would have a 97% chance of winning that battle, with F representing 15 versus the lowest defense value of 0 on the opposing card due to your X card typing. Each individual card battle is a small victory. If you win the battle, the opposing card is now owned by you on the board. Your opponent can attempt to regain control of it by battling it with another card or by chaining. Chaining, or combos, play a huge part in Tetra Master and can easily mean the difference between winning or losing. Chaining occurs when you win a card battle. If the card you just gained control of has an arrow, or several arrows, pointing to another card or cards that are already on the board under your opponent's control, then that card will also be flipped and put under your control. It's not always good to choose a lot of cards that have a lot of arrows in every direction, because this means more combos will occur which can be very good or disastrously bad for you. If you have a card with 8 arrows under your control pointing to 3 other cards on the top 3 positions also under your control, it only takes that single card losing to your opponent in a battle for it to flip all 3 other cards to your opponent. If there are matching arrows during the combo, the 2 cards will do battle as normal. After all the cards have been played, the winner is the one who has the most cards under his or her control. And now for a few basic tips and notes. Uh, the blocks on the board are important. Uh, if for example they block off a square on the board completely, you want to fill that on the first turn with one of your most vulnerable cards. This ensures that it can never be flipped. You also want to place your cards using the blocks and walls of the game board to hide their sides with no arrows meaning if your opponent wants to flip your cards, he will have to do battle with them instead of getting free flips. Cards with no arrows, or only one arrow, may seem useless, but they can be important anti-chain tools. If you place a card with many arrows on your last turn, there is a chance it will be forced to do battle with another card. It may then lose that battle and chain other cards to your opponent. A card with no arrows cannot initiate a battle, so if you are ahead on the last turn, you are guaranteed the victory. Cards in-game have a random chance to level up depending on what they do. If a 0p00 card attacks a lot, there is a chance it will become a 1p00. And likewise, if a 0m00 card defends a lot, it may become a 0m01. 
Cards can also upgrade typing, so a P or M card has a small chance to become an X card, and then an X card has a small chance to become an A card. As far as I know, this is a small random chance and not any type of experience point system, so the only way for this to happen is to use them in battle a lot and cross your fingers, just like doing battling in this game. When picking cards to use, you want to try and cover corners and walls with single cards. So you want to have cards that have at least three arrows all in the same quarter of the card, like an arrow pointing left, top left, and up. If the card has good defense stats, you can place it in the bottom right corner and your opponent will have a tough time flipping it. Covering walls is a similar concept, but they can be used to protect your corner cards as well. So a card with three arrows pointing top left, left, bottom left can be placed directly above the corner card you just placed to block it from being chained. Avoid capturing cards from your opponent that have a lot of arrows until the end of the game. This ensures you get the chance to start a big chain instead of your opponent getting that chance. And that's it, guys. Uh, I hope I've shed some light on this incredibly confusing and almost completely luck-based game. Uh, the most important thing to remember is to just have fun and don't pull your hair out when your 9P88 loses to a 0P00. It'll only happen 22% of the time after all. And feel free to screenshot the chart from the real-life version of the game uh, that's in the video and you can use that to give you an idea of what your chances are in tough matchups. I uh, hope you enjoyed the guide, guys, and see you next time.